This lesson is use the Fetch API to retrieve a list of data. In this lesson, we're going to create a website using MVC and ASP.NET Core. We're then going to have a single web page, and all we're going to do is put a little bit of code on there to retrieve a list of JSON objects and retrieve a single JSON object using the Fetch API. We're also going to talk about using the Catch method. So the first thing let's do is let's create a website using ASP.NET Core. Open up another instance of Visual Studio 2022 and select Create a New Project. This time we're going to search for ASP.NET Core Web App, but you want to look for the one that's the Model View Controller template. Click Next. Let's give it a name of Fetch API Samples, and again, place it where you want. Again, choose .NET 8, 6, 7, doesn't matter. Again, configure for HTTPS if you want. I would choose no authentication type for now. We don't need to have any security on this. And go ahead and click Create. I find it's always a good idea just to check and make sure everything works. Just go ahead and run the project and it should come up with a default screen that lets you know that the website is indeed working. To our index page, let's go ahead and get a list of JSON objects now using the Fetch API. Under Views Home, open your index.cshtml, and we're going to replace their div with some code of our own. I'm going to change the title to be Fetch API Samples. And then I've got a button, and the button has get all for the content. The on click is going to be call this function called get all data, which is located down in our script tag down here. But the first thing we need to do before we look at that is we need to replace that constant server underscore URI with one that has a valid port number. So I'm assuming your web API server is still running, so let's go over to that. Once you're over there, you can see that you've got your local host and then the port number. Now, I'm using HTTPS, you may not be. So make sure you copy everything from here, including that port number, then go back here and replace it into here. Now, don't eliminate this, this slash API. We need that piece of it as well. But I'm going to now down on line 13 within that get all data, I'm going to call the fetch and I'm going to pass it that server URI and tack onto it slash people. Because remember, that's how we get the complete list of person objects from that file. This is promise based. So the fetch runs, it gets a response object and it passes it to the next method in the chain, which in this case is the then. So we get that response object and all I'm going to do with it right now is I'm going to do a council.log on that. Okay, now, if we did get any sort of error, that would drop into that catch method. And then we would put that out on the console as well. But we've done everything we need to. Let's take a look and make sure we got everything right. So we'll run this. We have our web API server still running. Bring up your developer tools and click get all. If you've done everything correctly, you should see that we now have a response object. And this is what it looks like. This is the response object that comes back from fetch. Okay, this is not our response object. This is the fetch one. Our object is contained within the body property. And we'll take a look at that in just a bit. But I wanted to show you what it has in here. It has an OK of true. If you get back a status of 200 to 299, then the OK property is set to true. Anything other than that will be set to false. It'll give us our status. Sometimes it'll give us a status text, tell us to type like basic, or in this case, cores. And it'll tell us the URL that we use to make this call. Now, obviously, we want to get at our data. So we want to get at our response object that has that data property so we can grab the list of person objects or customers or employees or whatever you're returning. So let's take a look at how to get that body property using the .json method. So back in our index.cshtml, let's add a then before this other one. And we'll do a response. And we're simply going to do a response.json. Now, what this does is this unwraps that body that we saw just kind of down there in the uh, console window. And then it passes that response on. Now, this is our response. So we could call this our response here if you wanted to. So we know that that's the one that's a little different. So that's the one that we're getting from our response class that we created in C Sharp. All right, let's save this. If you're still running, go ahead and do the hot reload here. 
go back over to your browser where your front end is running and now click on the get all. And now what you see is we're getting the console.log on our response. So now you see our object that has our status, has our status text, has our message, and then look at there is the data. So there we go. That's how easy it is to use this fetch API. If you remember, I wrote two web API endpoints. We did the first one where we got the whole list of person objects. Now let's go out and get a single JSON object using the fetch API. Back in our index.cshtml, let's add a div above the button. We'll have a label, person ID, and then we'll have an input into which you can add some data. So in this case, it'll be a person ID that we're going to add. Let's add a new button below our other one. And we're going to call a function here called get row. So down in the script, let's add a new get row function. And this one, what it's going to do is it's going to grab that person ID from the input. We'll assign it to this variable called ID. Then when we call fetch, look what we're doing. We're doing the server URI slash people slash, and then we're appending whatever we type in to that input field. If we type in a one, a one goes there. If we type in a two, a two goes there, etc. But the rest of the code is exactly like what we did with the get all data. We're doing the response. We're unwinding that body using .json. We're getting our response that we are then going to spit out to the console.log. Once again, save your changes. Once they're saved, you can do the hot reload or just restart the application, either one. When you come back to your browser, you should see the new input field. We click on get a row. You should now see our response object and notice the data property here has our data, which is our one person object. Now, if you remember in that URI that gets a single one, we can check to see if we got valid data or not. And if we didn't find that person, like if I type in a 1111, I know there's no person ID with that there. So when I click on get a row, you can see the browser is actually reporting back a 404 to me. That's nice. But we're also still getting our response object. And if you remember, I wrote the message that said, can't find person with ID equal to 1111. And then you see the status is a 404. The status text is a not found. That's our response object. So the browser is telling us that we got a 404 from that last call, but we're also getting our response object. I like this because I'm staying consistent from whether I'm getting data or not getting data. I'm always getting the same response object back that I can always check the status, the status text, and the data. So let's take a look at what constitutes an error in the catch method. Now you saw that just by me putting in a invalid person ID, we got a 404. And as you know, most likely a 404 is going to generate an error because it's considered an error. The fetch doesn't create it as an error. Instead, you saw the browser reported it back as an error, but it didn't stop our code. It didn't blow up. What does constitute an error and thus goes into the catch method is if you have a network error, if you have a cores error, if you have anything that is something other than the normal HTTP status codes between 100 and 599. So let's change our port number up here. Let's go ahead and reload. We come back to our browser and if I click on either one of these, it's going to hesitate for just a few seconds because it's got an error. And thus that type error failed to fetch. That's what we're getting from that console.error in our catch method. So in this lesson, we created a simple website. We added some buttons and we used the fetch function to make our calls to our web API endpoints. I mean, you saw how easy it was to do this. We also learned how to handle those network errors by using the catch method. Coming up next, check the JSON response object.